Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with a physique update of Andrew Jack. This is a full posing video, we have all the poses, all the quarter turns, we can see pretty much everything and I gotta say, this guy, he is so genetically blessed, he has an amazing, amazing physique, crazy structure, crazy symmetry, crazy muscle bellies, everything is spot on, so much potential in this bodybuilder that just turned pro a couple of months ago and is preparing to have his pro debut in about one week. Now, as far as conditioning, let's talk about that because the show is happening in one week and this is him right now, he didn't say that this was an older video or anything like that and this is the most conditioned that we ever saw saw him so far, in all of his previous updates, he looked much less conditioned and in these photos he looks the best that he ever looked so far, that's for sure, and his peak week is just about to start, so he's going to dehydrate, he's going to carb up, everything is gonna look much better in a week, but as far as the conditioning, the body fat percent, look at the glutes he is definitely not completely shredded right now, as you can see the glutes and the hamstrings, there are no lines, no cuts, no separations, there isn't a lot of fat either, he's probably holding some water for sure, I don't know how much can his physique, his conditioning actually change in that peak week, I know it can change a lot, but how much can he have glute striations in a week from now? Here's what Steve Kuklo's glutes looked at two and a half weeks out of Texas and Steve Kuklo is probably the favorite to win this show and as you can see his glutes were pretty much shredded at two and a half weeks out. Here is Quinton area right now after he did Tampa and probably ate a whole bunch of junk food and he probably held some water but as you can see his glutes are dry and separated and he's not dehydrated, he's probably still holding some water but his body fat percent is pretty low so you can see the striations in the glutes. And that's just not the case with Andrew, now as far as everything else, aside from glutes and hamstrings, everything is in shape except quads, I'm gonna show them to you in a second, but as far as glutes and hamstrings, maybe Andrew has the same issue like for example Samson Dauda. No matter how conditioned he gets, and he was conditioned all around, his glutes just for some reason can't get in shape and it looks like he doesn't have a lot of fat in there, but for some reason separation is not present and you might be thinking, well he didn't even flex his glutes here, no, that's not it, his glutes looked like this the whole time in all the poses, he is flexing them but separations are simply not appearing. Could it be the same case with Andrew? I don't know, because yeah, his glutes are not in shape, but take a look at his quads. His quads are also not really completely shredded, he still has some work to do to get rid of all the body fat in his lower body. Now, when somebody has high estrogen, they have problems losing fat in their lower body, so maybe that's the thing, and also they're holding more water in their lower body, so maybe he's just holding a lot of water in his lower body and when he dehydrates, it's going to look much better, much more conditioned. There are two things that people are criticizing Andrew the most for, and that's back and hamstrings. Now, if you take a look at his back, it could be bigger, sure, he needs to add more muscle to the back, but does he have genetics? Does he have crazy back genetics? He absolutely does. When he did this transition to back double bicep, it really reminded me of Flex Wheeler. And it just so happens that Flex Wheeler is coaching Andrew, now is that a coincidence or is it something about Flex Wheeler's training or posing, I don't know, but there certainly are similarities in these two physiques, structure and shape wise, of course Flex Wheeler was a much better bodybuilder, no doubt about that, but there are similarities. The other thing, the other flaw that Andrew has and is criticized most for is his hamstrings, especially from the side, from the back too, you don't see a lot of separation, but from the sides in the quarter turns you can see the gap, you can see that his quads are definitely overpowering his hamstrings, he just needs more thickness in that area, I think he's trying to make it up by putting his hind leg a little bit more backwards, so it creates an illusion that his hamstrings are bigger, but that will only help you to a certain point, the judges will see what is happening, and Andrew is definitely lacking the hamstrings. Also, he should definitely open up more and show his shoulder and chest width. 
he should take a page from the master of quarter turns, Ian Valier. See how Ian opens up nicely. He presses his legs one next to another, making them appear bigger, and he twists his body as much as he can, so he can open up as much as possible in order to show the width of the shoulders and chest. Of course, Ian has much more massive legs, uh, hamstrings. Also, Ian's waist is super tiny from the sides, and he has a lot of muscle in the shoulders, in the upper body. Andrew might not be as big as Ian in the shoulders and arms and also the hamstrings, but he can definitely improve this quarter turn with uh, better posing. Alright, enough dissecting this physique, let's talk about what he can do at Texas and Arnold UK. So a lot of people are hyping this guy up, Flex Wheeler is saying that he can be top 6 at the Mr. Olympia and possibly win the Mr. Olympia one day. I don't know if that is the case, I don't know how reliable Flex Wheeler is, how good his eye is, but I think you cannot say something like that until you saw the guy in the pro lineup. This guy never competed against pros, Tax is gonna be his pro debut, so anything is possible, really. Do I see him possibly winning that show? Honestly, I don't know. I, I just don't know what he's gonna look like next to Steve Kukla, next to Kamal, next to Quinton. Uh, I do think, based on what I'm seeing, that he has a chance of being in that top three. Can he beat Steve Kuklo? If I was a batting man, if I had to put my money on it, I would not say Andrew's gonna win. I would say he's gonna be like third. I think he might have a chance of beating Quinton, but as far as Kamal and Steve Kuklo, I don't see that happening. Whatever you guys think though, based on this physique update, tell me in the comment section down below. Also, I gotta add that I think Andrew's gonna look better at Arnold Classic UK because he has more time to get in better shape. I don't think he's going to be super peeled at this show, but I think he's going to be conditioned enough to be in that top three. Again, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. If you guys are dieting for summer and you're in a caloric deficit and you're putting your body in a vulnerable position, make sure to supplement with some kind of multivitamin, multimineral uh, product. For example, Vintage Base is a great supplement. I suggest that to you. If you want to use my code, you're going to get a 12% discount. And if you want to support my channel, you can do that by trying one of the old school lab supplements. The link is down below. It really helps a lot. And again, if you use a code even, you get a 12% discount. All right, next let's talk about Sean Clarida clearing up the air. So Sean Clarida posted this photo in which he looks absolutely ridiculous. He looks insane. And yes, this is recent. Matt Jansen also posted this photo. He says that it was taken this Friday, so Sean looks enormous. He looks really big right now. He looks super round. His conditioning is also amazing for this point in time. This is a mini Ronnie Coleman, basically. I mean, he has everything. And if he was a couple of inches taller with the same structure, he would probably be winning the Mr. Olympia in the Open. Now, in one of my previous videos, I showed you guys Ian Valier saying that Sean Clarida is gonna do the Open, that Ian is 92% sure. He did say, do not quote me on this but why would he even say something like that if that wasn't true but anyways Sean Clarida makes a statement he says let me clear the air I have not announced or made a decision on whether I was doing either 212 or open at the Olympia and the option of doing both is not off the table as I'm awaiting the final decision from the IBB and the committee on that so, unless it comes directly from my mouth, it's all fake news. And then there are a couple of hashtags such as Stop the Rumors, You Don't Know, Misinformed. And also a hashtag before that is No Plan B. So it's kind of confusing. Is there a plan A? Because there is no plan B. <laughs> I don't know. But jokes aside, what he said here is that he's not officially doing just the open. He did not really announce that. But look, guys, I mean, it's not like a news channel came up with this. If a news channel made a, made a story up just for the views, then okay, it would make sense that somebody lied, made it up. But it's Ian Valier who said this, and Ian has absolutely no reason to lie, to make something like this up. And again, you guys know that Matt Jansen is coaching uh, Sean Clarida, and Matt Jansen is owning Raw and Revive companies that are sponsoring Ian. Also, Ian Valier's brother-in-law, Chris Bumstead, is a part owner of Raw, 
with Matt Jensen, so these guys are all connected and they talk and probably Ian Valier heard something from Matt Jensen and he <laughs> made it official basically by saying it on a, on a big podcast, Mr. Olympia podcast, so I'm guessing it's just Ian spilling the beans again for some reason that the guy can't keep a secret, he probably shouldn't have said this publicly, and yeah, until Sean Clarida makes an announcement officially, we don't know which division he's gonna do or if they're actually gonna let him do two divisions, both divisions, 212 and the Open. But I just watched the Muscle and Fitness podcast, uh, Bob Ciccarillo was a guest and he says that there is basically no chance this is gonna happen. They do not want crossovers at the Olympia or actually in the IFBB. Anyways, it's probably not gonna happen. Sean is probably gonna have to choose either fight for his old title to get it back or or try himself in the open against the big boys and even though he didn't announce anything something was spoken about him probably wanting to do the open if he qualifies and Ian just told us that on a podcast still it's not official but I think it's pretty sure even though Sean made this statement what do you guys think Oh, and yeah, after Kamal failed to win Tampa Pro, a lot of people were actually disappointed. So many people had him winning this show and wanted to see him win. And I think that's probably because some guys from the 212 already won their pro shows in the open, like Sean Clarida. He did that at Legion Sports Fest when he smoked Regan Grimes and Sergio Oliva. And of course, after people saw a 212 champion beating these open guys, especially because he's the shortest 212, people had the same expectations from Kamal. But Tampa Pro seems like a much harder show to win than that Legion Sports Fest. I mean, of course, he beat everybody except for Akeem Williams. So Akeem Williams is a really tough bodybuilder to beat. I mean, he was 6th at the Mr. Olympia. He's one of the mass monsters. So if Sean Clarida was competing against Akeem, what would happen? What would be the outcome? Where would Sean Clarida place in this lineup against Quinton and Akeem? And so I suggested this idea to the best Instagram comparison page, Fernando Arroyo. So he made a nice comparison so we can take a look. In the front double, I probably have Sean Clarida. In the front lat, I don't know, because Akeem has really big and round legs, and maybe that's the reason why he would take this one, I'm not sure. Side chest, I would give definitely to Akeem because of this shoulder, chest, arm, mass, and also the side leg. Uh, back double, I definitely give it to, to Sean Clarida. Look at the details, look at the conditioning in the hamstrings and glutes, and Akeem doesn't have that. Uh, back lat spread, same thing, lower back, lower lats, and also conditioning in the glutes and hamstrings. Uh, most muscular, Akim has bigger and rounder legs, but Sean is more conditioned and has more details in the shoulders and upper chest. So I don't know if Sean Clarida would have won Tampa Pro in the open, it would be definitely much tougher than Legion Sports, and I think it would be much closer than Kamal versus Akim. Whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below how would this play out, and also tell me what do you think, is Sean gonna do the open or 212, if he has to choose? Alright, next we have some bad news for Balkan bodybuilding. Peter Kluncher tore his bicep again. So he says, this week I sustained bicep injury, my right arm bicep tendon snapped again. I already had the same problem 10 years ago, but on the left arm. Then he also adds that his competitive season is over, but he already announced that before the bicep tear, and now he's gonna do what he needs to do, you know, have a surgery or whatever it takes, and uh, hopefully he's gonna fix this bicep. Bicep tears are really not that big of a problem, not like it was back in the day, for example, when uh, Dorian Yates tore his bicep, he basically completely destroyed his physique, his physique was never the same, he never really had the good looking bicep ever again, but for example, lately, uh, Anton Voyant tore both of his biceps in the past two years, he had surgeries and you can't even notice that he tore those biceps. And just like Petter said, uh, 10 years ago he tore his left bicep, can you see anything wrong with his biceps? Definitely not, his biceps are his trademark, definitely his best body parts, and so all this means is that he has to stay away from the gym for a while until he recovers, he can train legs, but he can't really train his upper body, and I think that's fine, I think he needs some rest after this competitive season, he needs some time in the off season after he recovers to grow, to improve, he already did great this year he was third in that Portugal pro show so next time we see him on stage I'm sure he's gonna be winning pro shows anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and for more stuff like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye